What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Keep Living channel. I am the KL Rider. So today, I'm um, gonna give you guys a uh, 5,000 mile review on this baby right here. Um, this is the uh, 2021 uh, Yamaha R3. And I'm gonna let you guys know what I think about this and you know how I feel about this uh, this particular motorcycle for um, about a year that I've been having, you know, having it now. Um, so yeah, let's get into this video. We live, we live, we live through it all. Keep living, keep living, keep living through it all. Keep living, keep living, keep living through it all. Keep living, keep living, keep living through it all. We I got about, you know, just over 5,000 miles um, on this Yamaha um, R3, see a 2021 version. And one of the first things I want to talk about is comfort. Um, so this, this bike has about a seat height of about uh, 31 inches. I think like 30.8, 30.9 or something like that, but I'm going to say 31. I'm 6'2", um, 240 pounds. Um, this particular bike, um, is pretty much, you know, not a super bike, something that's not going to kill you, you know, out, you know, out on the street. Um, but as far as, you know, comfortability, um, I gotta say for me being tall, being 6'2", um, the bike is pretty comfortable. Um, naturally my legs um are just you know past you know a uh, 90 degree angle but the seat is very comfortable you know it's a very firm seat but it's not you know too hard when you can't ride you know for you know less than a half an hour then you have to you know get a, you know get off the bike um i've ridden on this thing for about an hour straight um and i was pretty much you know fine you know naturally once you get used to riding you know, you're used to that pressure, you know, sitting down and you, you kind of don't feel it until it's actually, you know, time to get up. But there's never been a time where I sat on the bike and I'm riding and riding and riding. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I got to pull up. You know, by the time my hour is up, you're pretty much, you know, at your desti you know, your destination, you know, already. Um, so if you look, <clears throat> just uh, turn it so on so I could turn the wheel. If you look, you'll see how my feet are you know on the on the foot pegs um pretty much my toes is here my knee is literally just under the gas tank and um how you're supposed to ride the bike you, you literally you know scoot back and you have you know not a full tuck um but you know just above you know the full tuck position and you can see how my back is my bike my back is angled you know, really nicely, you know, I'm not too far down, you know, like I'm riding the R6, you know, or 1000 or something like that. So everything here to me is fine. 
um for you know a sport you know a sport bike so i don't have no problem you know with this you know while i'm back you know i'm riding you know just riding or whatever the case is you know it's comfortable you know my arms you know you know tucked in my arms are not way out here you know arms are tucked in you know it's 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 pretty you know comfortable um if i was you know six one or six feet it'd be super duper comfortable it'd be extra you know extra comfortable and pretty much the uh the small in height you get you know is going to get even more comfortable because you know your legs you know are not you know as bent as this but for me this is bent fine you know i don't feel no tension pressure i don't feel like anything is going to break my hands or on the controls you know and i feel good um um yeah so as far as comfortability i don't have no issues you know with it you know my back is never hurting when i get off the bike i'm not like oh you know trying to you know stretch my back out whatever the case because i was only riding for like 10 minutes so definitely you can ride this around on the highway you can get on the street you know wherever it is that you, you know you have to go um this is going to get you there um in comfortable you know fashion so if you're looking for something that's you know that's not going to kill you while you're out on the road um and you want something that looks nice you know sporty and you need something that's comfortable i think the r3 you know is there literally that bike you know you should you know should have um sitting up i'm gonna you know just sit up you know straight on it you see how you know pretty much how my legs are positioned you know a little a little stretched out um but i'm balancing you know i'm balancing the bike fine um yeah there's there's no issues you know the tank is here like i just showed you my knee is you know just right under the tank and it has like this this these gaps right here where your knees just fit you know beautifully right inside there so once you get them tucked in there you're like you know locked in and you have you know real control you know of the bike everything is centered like this is comfortable you know like i said in you know um my very first video <laughs> that i did which was on my phone you know it wasn't the best you know video quality but it was you know my first video um i said this was the most comfortable bike you know that i've ever ridden and i'm gonna be honest with you this yamaha 3 this is a super duper comfortable bike so if you want a sporty bike um that's real comfortable for you to ride every single day the yamaha 3 is you know pretty much you know where it's at but now you know let's talk you know durability um <clears throat> Let me tell you something. <laughs> As you know, a new rider, you know, I've been riding for about, you know, four and a half years now, so I still consider myself, you know, new. Naturally, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, you know, on the road. There's things you may not notice, you're not going to see. Um, and that's what's going <laughs> to show you pretty much what your bike can handle and what it, what it can't handle. Um, perfect example, there's been tons of times where I'm just. I'm just having so much fun, you know, just riding and, you know, I hit potholes, <laughs> you know, I hit, you know, some of these, you know, as they call them, you know, tar snakes, um, which makes your bike, you know, wiggle, you know, kind of, you know, kind of funny because the road is not even, but you hit pop, potholes, you know, out here, you know, South Florida, you, you roll over a, a, a dead animal or something like that, whether it's a raccoon, you know, or a squirrel or whatever it is, you know, a, a smashed duck or whatever it is. And I got to say, not one time if I hit a pothole or if I ran over a dead animal, not one time did I ever lose control of this bike. And... Motorcycles are kind of made like that where there's this event called, you know, tank slapping. So it's like when you're riding, you're riding fast, then all of a sudden something happens where you lose control of the bike and your handlebars start, you know, going crazy and, until it starts to settle itself out. So what I've learned, and I found this out later on, that if something like that happens, where an instance where like there was one time I hit a pothole and I was going probably like at 50 miles an hour and I didn't realize it, but it surprised me. And I was like, oh, and then the bike, the handlebar started, you know, flopping back and forth. 
the very first thing that I did was I clamped my knees uh, to the tank and I kind of let go of the handlebars. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch anything. But that slight moment of me just lifting my hands off the handlebar, the bar started to even itself out and the bike started to find its own way and it started to even itself out where the tire was literally started to go straight. And then I was able to take control, you know, take control of the bike. Um, durability wise, like I said, I hit a pothole. I even rolled over the dead animal before. Um, I haven't had problems with my forks. And I haven't had problems, you know, with my suspension. Um, I haven't had pawn, uh, problems. I haven't had any problems um, with the handlebars, you know, or anything becoming, you know, uneven. And naturally, you don't want to crash your bike. You know, that's something you want don't want to do. I got a story for that, you know, later on down, down the pipeline. But, you know, the main thing is, you know, you don't want to test your bike out by smashing it into stuff, you know, on purpose just to see what the durabilities are. I don't have, you know, crash bars, you know, on the, um, on the frame. I don't have um, crash sliders or frame sliders, you know, stuck out. So just in case if I tip the bike over or drop the bike, it falls on the, um, the bars or the slider to stop everything from breaking. Um, the only thing that's really protecting, you know, the bike is pretty much, you know, the fairings, you know, right here. And once that cracks, eh, you know, you can kind of get, you know, you know, new fairings. But durability wise, nothing is broken. No screws has come loose. Um, no nuts, no bolts disconnected or anything like that. Everything pretty much, you know, stayed in place. And this is literally all after 5,000 miles, you know, of riding. I haven't had to do any type of repairs on the bike. I haven't had to stick a screwdriver in it. Well, I have done it just to see if anything, you know, came loose. But everything is pretty much still tight. Um, everything is still well oiled. Everything is put together like how, you know, it was when I first got it. And like I said, when I first got the bike, I got the bike and it was only about, you know, a little less than 1,500 miles on it. So durability wise, I've ridden in, you know, a heavy rainstorm, you know, out here in South Florida. Um, I've ridden in, you know, very humid, cloudy, hot, you know, days, you know, rainy days. The only thing I haven't ridden is, is snow and I don't think nobody's going to ride in snow. Not unless you have, you know, some type of adventure bike that can handle that. So. Um, but it's not snowing out here. So durability wise, I mean, you're not going to have no issues with this. Um, it's a beautifully crafted, beautifully put together uh, bike. Um, five out of five, I give the sucker literally a five. Thumbs up for this bad boy. So I want to get into um, now the uh, usage of the bike, you know, ease of use. Um, this is a 321 cc um, engine bike. It has um, six uh, six gears. Um, the bike weighs about um, 375 pounds. And all I can say is, for me in particular, the bike is very easy to handle. Um, it's very flickable. Um, very controllable, um, especially in the corners where, you know, a lot of people have problems, you know, getting in the corners, you know, handling their bikes, you know, a counter steering, you know, sometimes the weight can be a factor of, you know, whether or not they can control their bike or not. Um, this bike is very easy to handle. You sit on the bike, you're comfortable. Um, you have full control you know, of this particular, you know, model bike. It's not going to scare you. You know, naturally, if you're a brand new rider, if you've never ridden a bike before, <coughs> excuse me, if you've never ridden a bike before, the first time you get on, no matter what bike it is, no matter what bike it is, when you start going, literally 25 to 30 miles an hour is going to seem fast. You know, you're going to lose your mind and you're going to get, you know, you're going to get scared. So, this bike tops out at about 115 miles an hour. Um, the power is very linear, meaning that there's not something that's gonna, you know, surprise you in speed as you rev, 
you know, the engine or as you give it more throttle, you know, to get more speeds, you know, as you get your RPMs up. It's like the RPMs are going up steady, you know, while you're, you know, on the throttle. And pretty much as you get to like eight, nine thousand, uh, not eight, nine, ten RPMs, you're going to feel the speed, you know, it's a little bit extra, but it's not too crazy where it's like all of a sudden the bike is just totally uncontrollable. So no matter where you're riding, if you're just riding on the street, especially if you're in the street, I consider myself a street rider because um, I commute to work, you know, every single day on this, on the street, you're going to need that safety net of not having something that's so powerful that it scares you when you take off, but then you don't know how to stop, you know, when it's time to stop because, you know, your bike is just going, you know, you know, too doggone fast for you. Um, so this right here, so comfortable to ride, very easy to control, you know, when you're out on the streets, when you're not out on the road, no matter where you're at, super duper easy to handle. Um, you're not going to have no issues, you know, once you start training, once you start to become a better rider, you're going to like the feeling, you know, of, you know, of the bike. And like I said, it's not too heavy. Um, so if there's times you feel like the bike is going to tip over, you know, you're going to be able to put your foot down, you know, and stop the bike, you know, from tipping, you know, tipping over, you know, having, you know, having an accident. Um, so the heavier bikes, you know, once you start getting up until that 800, 900 pound bikes, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to do that, you know, to put your foot down, um, stop the bike, you know, from tipping over. That's why a lot of these guys, they got crash bars, you know, on these bikes. So once it starts falling over, that's it. It's going to fall over. But something like this, you know, if you feel like you brake too hard, you hit the front brake a little bit too hard, you come into a stop and then, you know, the bike feel like it's going to tip over. You don't automatically have to let the bike fall. You can literally put your foot you know, to the ground, you know, put your foot to the ground and that'll help you, you know, keep the bike up. So the bike is 375 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. But, you know, you put yourself on, you know, on top of that bike, you know, it feels like it evens itself up. Like the bike is, is not too heavy. It's light. You're going to feel good, you know, while you're out on the road. Easy to control, easy to ride, easy to hit the corners. Um, but all of that easiness becomes once you learn how to ride a bike. Remember that. So after about 5,000 miles, was the course of this bike worth it? It's worth it. And literally, um, I think I got kind of a steal. I literally paid $6,500 um, out the door for this particular bike. Um, this bike has not let me down, you know, not one time. Um, no issues, no mechanical issues, no electrical failures, you know, no parts, you know, breaking off or anything like that. Um, pretty much every, everything on this bike, um, is stock. Um, I didn't have, you know, any new exhaust, um, any shorty levers or windshield changes, um, um, any type of, um, mirrors change. Um, no extra clip-ons, you know, removed and put on, anything like that. So everything is stock, you know, still got the same tires, you know, the color scheme, the graphics. Um, their entire bike is the same way that it is, you know, when I first bought it. And I think I'm going to leave it like that um, for a while. Um, I'm not hard-pressed to do um, any type of upgrades, you know, at this moment. If there's any upgrade I'll do to the bike, it's most likely it's probably going to be just to put, you know, like an exhaust on it or something like that. Um, other than that, I mean, the exhaust sounds, you know, just fine for literally stock exhaust. Um, the tires, you know, are pretty damn good. Um, these are the uh, Sport Max, the 300 uh, Sport Max tires. And I had this bike uh, for about, you know, a year now. And literally the tires are still going. Um, I have to change, you know, the tires eventually. Um, but so far I literally got eight months, you know, out of, out of these particular tires. Um, is it almost time to change them? Yeah, it's pretty much almost time to change. The front tires still look good. You know, the rear tire, you know, naturally that's going to be the main one you want to, you know, watch out for. Um, but yeah, I got eight months 
and I used to have the uh, Pirelli, you know, Diablo uh, two tires um, on my Ninja, and I gotta say, I like those tires. They were very sticky. I mean, those are some super duper sticky tires, but man, they only lasted for like, you know, four and a half, you know, close to five months. So every five months, you know, I was changing the tires. Now, these particular tires, you know, they're not as, as sticky, but they're sticky enough where they do the job where you feel comfortable, you know, feel comfortable on the road. And they're at a decent, you know, decent price too. Um, so you factor in, you know, how much I paid for the, for the bike, um, $6,500 out the door. Um, my insurance is dirt cheap, full coverage insurance. I pay $50 a month. Um, there's no payments on the bike. The bike is fully paid for. Only thing I got to do is worry about the insurance and gas. Literally gas is like less than $10, you know, lasts me for a whole week, you know, whole week and a day, you know, riding around regularly, regularly or whatever else it is that I'm doing. So, you know, $10 gas. And I think this gas tank is about, it's about 3.7 uh, gallons, liters or whatever it is. And you get like 56 miles, you know, per gallon, you know, per tank. I don't really believe all, you know, all of that. Sometimes I think it's less, um, you know, less than that. It depends on if you're just riding like on a highway, you don't stop. But once you start stopping, you know, red lights and stuff like that, you know, yeah, your gas mileage, you know, kind of decreases because you're just sitting there. The gas is wasting, but you're not going going anywhere. But you factor in the cost, $6,500 that I paid for this bike um, out the door, 2021 Yamaha 3, $10 of gas, you know, <laughs> last me for a week, you know, in a, in a day or two. So that's like eight days, you know, almost. Um, remember how I used to, hey, you got $5, you know, your $5. You drive like, you know, six blocks, you need another five dollars. You put five dollars in this bad boy, that'll last you like four days. So if you're running out of money and you need some money, you know, to get you to work and you need that money to, you know, fill up your gas tank, five dollars will get you, you know, to that payday. Your fourth day, then that fifth day, you're good to go. You got gas, you know, in your tank. So that's one of the upsides, you know, about, you know, having a, mo a motorcycle. So course wise for me it's literally dirt cheap you know dirt cheap to own and i uh, did a video about how i got into motorcycling and the course factor and, you know i'll leave those videos i think it's up here or up here you can go and check those out you know if you want so course factor you can't beat this baby right here so people thank you very much for uh, tuning in um this is my 5,000 mile review of my yamaha r3 um I gotta say, I love this bike very much. After 5,000 miles, it's definitely worth the money in gold. Um, this is an awesome bike. Anyone who's looking to get into getting into you know motorcycling, you know for the first time. Um, anyone who's you know looking to maybe you know ditch their current bikes, whatever they have, and you want something different. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, the Yamaha R3 is you know where it's at. Um, it hasn't failed me, um, not once, um, no mechanical issues, no electrical issues, everything is fine. You know, naturally I did its, you know, first oil change, you know, the first oil change was after 4,700 miles. So I think, you know, pretty much, you know, after, you know, every 4,500 miles, you know, that's what it, you know, needs an oil change. And actually it, um, it gives you a, a indicator, you know, on the dashboard, um, when you actually have to change the oil, so you're never guessing, you know, when you're going to have to change the oil. Um, so, yeah, this is my um, Yamaha R3. It's my uh, my baby right here. I don't know if you can see it or whatever the case is, but a big head in here. So, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This is the um, uh, Keep Living channel. I am the KL Rider, and... Some of you guys are probably going to ask, man, what kind of gear you got on? Well, hey, I got more videos to make. You know, do me a favor. I'm an up and coming channel. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Um, we're going to try to keep things simple. And it's all about riding, you know, being an everyday rider. You know, not out here, you know, trying to kill ourselves, 
you know, doing crazy things, you know, on the streets. So it's about commuting, it's about street riding, it's about, you know, wearing the proper gear, you know, and having fun, you know, on your motorcycle, you know. This is something that you're gonna do, you know, you wanna have fun with it, but at the same time, you wanna be safe, you know, too as well. So I want all you guys to get out there, ride your bike. So if you're gonna get a bike, get a new bike. Once again, it's the Keep Living channel. I am the KL Rider, and I want you all to keep living your lives. Peace out. We live. We live.